All right, is my mic on? Okay, good. All right, London, are you ready to rock? <laughs> That's unfortunate because it's a Tuesday afternoon and we're here to talk about Angular. <laughs> We're up. All right, so welcome, welcome to our talk on Angular Material, Cobalt Kraken. I'm Jeremy Elborn. I'm Kara Erickson. And we are members of the Angular team working on Angular Material. For those of you out there who aren't already familiar with Angular Material, it is an effort by the Angular team to create high quality UI components based on Google's material design spec, obviously built on Angular. So many of you in the audience are probably already familiar with our Angular 1 version of these components. Uh, GitHub's recent state of the Octaverse, which showed contribution statistics for a whole bunch of different repos and organizations, showed us that Angular Material is actually the top ninth repository for total number of contributors. And we are constantly blown away by the support and the enthusiasm of the community for this project. And many of you out in this audience have probably contributed based on this number. So thank you for that. We recently released our 1.1 version of Angular Material that has a slew of enhancements and bug fixes. And active development on this project is still ongoing and will be for some time. So expect to see more enhancements and bug fixes and more uh, over the, the next year for this. But what we're really here today to talk about is Angular Material 2. This is our ground up rewrite of the components based on Angular 2 in order to take advantage of all of the framework's new improvements and performance enhancements and everything else. And we started off our alpha process for Angular Material 2 back in March, our alpha zero, and now in September, we are in alpha nine. And in this six month period, we have gone from about six components in the Alpha Zero to about 21 in the Alpha Nine. So we have really made some progress. Gotta stop making that joke. <laughs> I'll never stop making that joke. <laughs> so to show off what we have been up to in this time, I thought it would be really good to just do a live demo to really showcase some of this. So this is why Kara is going to build a totally uh, brand new app from scratch right here on stage. Uh, yeah, we talked about that for like earlier. I'm just kidding, yeah, I've got something prepared. <laughs> okay, so uh, I have a project that I've been thinking about for a little bit, and it's called Leashed In. So it's a professional business network for the modern canine. Um, so in, in other words, it'll help your dog find career opportunities that meet his or her career goals. Well, it's good because um, I'm, I'm tired of my dog not <laughs> contributing their portion of the rent. It's, it's a problem. <laughs> Uh, so I created an empty repo with the Angular CLI. So all I've done so far is I've npm installed Angular Material and Hammer.js, which is one of our peer dependencies, and I've copied over some dog photos that were on my hard drive. So, right. so uh, let's get started. Yeah. Totally empty project, uh, only npm installed. So let's go ahead and add the dependencies we're going to need to get going with this application. So first we're gonna add Hammer.js, which Material uses for gesture recognition and handling. We're also going to drop in the material design icon font so that we can just add some icons to this application. And we'll also pull in a pre-built theme file from Angular Material that will provide us with all of the core styles and colors necessary for the components. And I also very quickly added some application-wide resets and overriding some of the browser defaults that we don't want. So now that we have our initial setup done, let's go ahead and add the material module. We can go ahead and just import material module. And you'll, you'll notice we're bringing in that material module from at angular slash material. This is a change in our latest alpha nine if you've been following the project. So we now offer one ng module that gives you all of the components with just one package. Okay, so now that we have this loaded, let's go ahead and start working on the application layout. So we're gonna start with a component called MD toolbar and we're going to set its color to primary. Uh, and that primary color is coming from that pre-built theme we pulled in a little bit earlier. Okay, so let's see what this is serving. Okay. 
We have a okay. couple of moments during this while we're waiting for the web server to, to refresh. Okay, so we have this nice, lovely purple toolbar, um, but it would look a little bit more professional if we had a pets icon or something to show this is a real website. So um, we're going to add MD icon, which is a component that will take the material design font that we loaded and turn this ligature into a real icon. Go ahead and wait for that to refresh. And we have the icon. So it's a little bit too big with its default size, so we're gonna customize it a bit. So we'll go ahead and add an icon 20 class. And then in our styles, we can go ahead and set the font size 20 pixels. So great, that's looking more reasonable. Next, let's add our side nav layout. So we want a side nav here on the right side to call out our dog details for each dog. So in our HTML, we can go ahead and add a, oops, a side nav layout. And in the side nav layout, we're gonna have a side nav. And since we want this on the right side, we're going to align it on the container's end, and we're going to put it in side mode to start. Okay, and that mode side for the side nav makes it open side by side with your application's content, so you can see the entirety of the content all at once. And I'm also adding some styles here. I'm adding a height to the MB side nav layout so that it'll span the remainder of the viewport underneath the toolbar. And the side nav, I'm giving it a width so that it'll be a little bit wider than the default. Okay, so we have this side nav here, but it would be nicer if we, instead of this boilerplate test text, we had um, some tabs. So we can move between the dog details and a feed of the dog's accomplishments. So we have a component called MD tab group. So here, let's add MD tab group. And a tab group consists of a number of tabs. So each tab is going to have a tab label, which is what you see on the top and tab content, which we're going to fill in in a moment. And we're also going to have a second tab that's going to be the feed. Okay, so let's refresh. Okay, so now we have our details and our feed. So at this point, we have the layout structure for our application all scaffolded out, and about how many lines of HTML did that take? Um, it's about 20 lines. Oh, okay. So that's really good. Uh, let's go ahead and add some content into this now. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is add a button to close the side nav. So um, really quickly, we're gonna add a local template variable to our side nav here called side nav. And um, we're gonna add a button into our content so that on click, we can call side nav.close. And let's make this the accent color. Okay, and then we're also going to add a quick style to button so that once it's in the side now we want it to look a little bit more natural, so we're gonna set the width to 100%. Okay, so let's wait for that to refresh. Uh, we want this to be a raised button. Okay. To refresh. Okay, so now we have something that's gonna close the side nav. Um, so instead of dog cards this time, what do you think about adding a grid list of dog photos? Oh uh, yeah, that'll be good. I really like the grid list component. Okay, so let's add a component called MD grid list. And when you create it, you tell it the number of columns that you want in your grid. So we're gonna want four columns. And the row height is optional, but we're gonna set it to the height of the pictures so that it doesn't stretch out. And a grid list is made up of a number of grid tiles. So each uh, grid tile it's going to have a dog and an image of the dog. So we're going to take that from our assets folder, .name, .png. And then we're also going to have some alt text here for accessibility. OK, so now we need an actual dogs array to back this. So if we go into our component type scripts, um, we'll create an array of dog objects. So this just contains metadata about each dog, like its name and its human, um, and so on and so forth. And then the last thing we're gonna do is on our grid list, we're going to set a max width so that um, it won't fill the remaining space in the browser because we don't want it to stretch since these are images. And we're also going to add oops, margin. Okay, so let's wait for that to refresh. Okay. So, uh, so some of those dog photos are looking uh, a little bit cut off. Is there, is there a reason for that? Yes, so grid tiles by default are all one by one. So this is actually completely configurable, so each tile can accept 
a coal span and a row span. So as you can see, some of these images really should have a row span of two instead of one. So in our metadata, or our dog objects, um, we have information about how many rows each dog image should span. So what we can do in our HTML is we can bind each grid tile to the dog's row span. Okay, so wait for that to refresh. And we have this lovely grid list. All right, that is looking fantastic. Can we, I, I wanna know these dogs' names. Can we put their names on here too? Yeah, so we can add a footer to each grid tile that can give it some and more information like its name. So let's add a grid tile footer here. And each grid tile footer is going to have two lines, one with the dog's name and one with the dog's human. Let's give this a tag here, human. And then since we're going to be calling out extra details about the dog, let's also add an MD icon here for info. Okay. Okay, so now we can see all the dog's information. So now that we have this info icon, let's actually make this work. So we can wrap this MD icon in a button since now it's going to become an action that's gonna open the details side nav. And we wanna reset any default button styles. We're gonna add MD icon button here too. So on click, we can call a method called show dog, pass in the dog. And in that method, we're going to want to do, oops, two things. So first, we're going to want to actually open the side nav. So let's add the imports that we're going to need for this. And we already have a local template variable for side nav, so we can just do a view child query for that local template variable, and then save it as this dot side nav. And then here, we can call this dot side nav dot open. In our HTML, let's remove this open attribute so that it only opens on demand. Okay, so let's make this still refreshing. Wait for it to refresh one more time. Oops. Oh, I, mean, I think I saved it exactly the wrong time. Okay. Let's wait for this to serve. Okay. Yeah, so now the side map's gone. Okay, so when we click it, it opens, when we click close. But we really want dog details um, for each dog to show up here on the panel. So. What we can do is add a current dog, and then here we can initialize it to empty object. And then in our tab content, let's add some more of the dog information. So this can be current dog dot name, human, age, and then we're also going to want to add a margin for that paragraph tag. So we click this, now we have each dog's information as we click around. All right, that, that's looking really good. We're getting a lot of details about these dogs, which is good if I'm you know, a user wanting to come in and hire one of them. Uh, but before, before I am ready to hire any of the dogs, I think I need to get some more like regular photo updates because they're so cute. Totally uh, can, we, can we add a setting for that to our application? Yeah, so we can add some application-wide settings. Uh, why don't we just add a menu here that opens up a settings dialog? So it should be pretty easy. So let's go to HTML. And so here we're going to add another MD icon. This time it's going to be more vert, which is those three dots that you see all over the place. And again, we're going to wrap it in a button since it's going to open something and reset default button styles with MD icon button. And we're going to have to restructure the toolbar just a bit since we want our icon and our title to be on the left side and the new icon to be on the right. So we're going to override MD toolbar row to justify the content with space between. Let's give it a second. And now we have this lovely button, uh, but it doesn't open a menu. So let's add a menu. So underneath the toolbar, we can use the MD menu component. And each menu consists of a number of menu items, each of which is a button. So we're gonna have one for settings. We can have one to toggle the theme. We can have one for help. And uh, since this is going to be on the right edge of the screen. We want it to open up to its left, so before the trigger. So we can set the exposition to before. The last thing we're gonna do is export the MD menu directive into a menu, menu local template variable so that we can pass it in here. Now, and you'll notice that the menu component is actually just representing the floating panel part of the menu, which you then just associate with another button in your view that acts as the trigger. So if we look at this here, 
we have the settings menu. And when you click on it, nothing's gonna happen right now because uh, we haven't actually set up the click handler. So let's set up that dialog. So like anything else in Angular 2, the dialog is going to be a component. So let's create a settings dialog. And it's just gonna be pretty simple. We're just gonna say, would you like dog pics every minute? And then we're gonna have a slide toggle here so you can switch that on or off. And then since we're adding a new component, we have to remember to add it to our module definition so that Angular knows about it. And then I'm also gonna add entry components here um, so that uh, yeah. when, oh, oh when sorry. Uh, yeah, we're, we're adding the entry components because otherwise when Angular is bootstrapping your application, it wouldn't normally encounter this settings dialog because it's not in any of your templates. So putting it here tells Angular to compile it anyway. Okay, so now let's add some of the actual logic to open the dialog. Okay, so the dialog opening is done through the MD dialog service, which we're injecting here. The call to open is very straightforward. You just call dialog.open pass the component that you want to display and some configuration options. Uh, here we're sending in a view container ref for this component in order to give Angular some context about how it should instantiate that component inside the dialog in terms of things like dependency injection and Angular's internal state. So you can see, as Jeremy mentioned, I, I called this.dialog.open and I passed in the settings dialog and the configuration. So let's actually hook this up. So if we go back to our menu, on click, we want to call open dialog. Okay. So to refresh. When we click this, we see a dialog, which we like dog picks every minute, and we have this yellow slide toggle. So this feels pretty feature complete. Is there anything else you want to add or? Yeah, it is it does have a lot of features. I'm I'm really almost ready to hire a dog, but I'm not I'm not super in love with the colors we're using. Can we change those somehow? Yes, so we can add a custom theme if we want. So why don't we go ahead and do that? So let's create a theme here. Then open up the theme. Okay. So our theme definition files for Angular Material 2 are based on SAS. So you simply create a file where you're importing some functions and mixins from the library, and then using those to define what your colors are and to import all of the styles. So you can see I'm adding colors here for our theme. I have one for cyan and one for amber. And then I'm passing that into this light theme function so that our backgrounds will be white by default. And then I'm including the Angular Material theme mixin and then passing in the theme that I created. And this theme definition file is now 10 lines. That is all you need to define the entirety of your theme for the entire application and you don't have any requirement to use SAS for any other components in your application, just this one theme file. So the last thing we need to do is add this file to the Angular CLI.json so that the CLI also knows that to watch this file. Yep. And the Angular CLI knows how to compile SAS out of the box, so no additional setup is necessary for this. Okay, so we're rerunning ng-serve with our new file. Okay, let's see, refresh this, and now we have cyan and amber. All right, so those are really, really pretty, beautiful, vibrant colors. Uh, but I, I generally like dark themes for my applications. Can we, can we have like an alternate dark theme? Yes, we can. <laughs> um, so you're not by no means, or you're by no means limited to one theme in your application. If we go back to the theme file, um, you can create as many themes as you want gated by CSS classes. So if I create this dark theme class, I can start passing in another set of colors. So here we can do the dark pink. We can do for our accent color, a moody blue gray. And then for our actual theme, we're gonna pass it into the dark theme function, which makes sure that the backgrounds are actually black instead of white. And then again, we're going to include the angular material theme mixin and pass in the dark theme that we just created. So, um, what this does is it'll make sure that any element whose parent has a dark theme class will get these theme styles. So we can add the class here at the top so you can see it. Oops. And we're going to bind it to something called is dark theme so that we can toggle it with this button here. So when we click is dark theme is going to equal, oops, bang is dark theme. 
And then we're going to initialize it to false so that it starts off light. Okay, let's see what's going. Okay, so toggle theme, now it's dark. You can see that theme's totally toggleable. I never get tired of watching them change. It looks so cool. <laughs> All right, you picked a good time to applaud because that's all we have for the live demo. <laughs> so everything you saw here on stage today is available in our Alpha 9 release, Cobalt Kraken, which just totally coincidentally came out last night at like 9.30 p.m. And so that, that's where we are right now with the project. Uh, you might be wondering, what, what are we working on next? Where are we going? Uh, so we are working on getting to a beta release state by the end of this year, so before 2016 is over. And we have a lot of work that we're going to be doing leading up to that and then after it. So we definitely have some more components we need to add. Uh, we, we've gotten pretty far. Uh, we have around 21 components right now, but there's still more to go. Uh, we are definitely going to be working on more polish and stability for what we already have and adding additional behaviors that haven't been implemented yet. Uh, we're going to be doing more work on our common UI toolkit. This is the foundation layer that all of the components are built on top of that will be reusable in everybody else's applications to make it easier to build your own components without having to reinvent the wheel in terms of common component behaviors that many, many components share, like popping open panels and accessibility concerns, things like that. And going even further into the future, we will be exploring uh, even more advanced components. We already have some early prototypes that aren't quite ready to show off today, like the, the data table that's pictured here. Uh, so far, this is all very early exploration work. Uh, so you'll have to come to our next talk at whatever next conference we'll be attending in order to get the news on what the state of that will be. Uh, but you can follow our progress on GitHub. These slides are already online. We'll be tweeting out the links in a little bit. And Kara will be uploading the live demo we created here on stage in about 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, that's all we have today, so thank you for coming, and thank thanks to all of our contributors who are in the audience. We, this wouldn't be possible without you. Thanks.